I think we should also talk about the Frozen ending because it's not really like a happily ever after. It's like not the classic happily ever after. Yeah, well, it's not what even like the whole movie sets it up to be. Like the way that the movie is structured and the way that the characters think, like they're working towards a very specific goal, right? For like true love, Anna's true love has to save her um and they have a very specific idea of what that means and it turns out that's actually not what it means like it it plays out differently than we expect in the movie Mm -hmm. like happily ever after usually in a classic disney film or a classic disney fairy tale film is the the princess not always a princess, Cinderella's not a princess, let's say, and Prince Charming, they find each other and fall madly in love where they're already in love and then they like go off into the sunset and that's the happily ever after. It's the same kind of ending as like a rom-com. Like all romantic comedies usually end with the two protagonists getting together. But this isn't, like Frozen is not like that. When Anna needs to heal her heart, I think, or save herself. It's an act of true love. And they even talk about how like, oh, if it's an act of true love, like I, like they need to go and find Han. Hans? Hans, yeah. (laughs) Is that Hans? Yeah, his name's Hans. See, I don't even remember his name because he's so irrelevant. (laughs) Yeah, Cheryl watched this like two days ago and she's like, what's what's that (laughs) Prince Charming's name again? I'm like, all I know is Olaf. Yeah, you didn't even remember Kristoff's name. <laughs> I wrote down the names just to make sure that we didn't, like, forget <laughs> any of them. Yet I didn't write down Hans because... <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's what we, like, that's what Anna even expected. And that's what, because we're mm-hmm. following Anna's journey, we expected, oh, she would kiss with, like, Hans and then Prince Charming and the princess, they'd, like, be okay, it'd be true love, and then she'd be saved. And so there was that race. But then outside of that... There was, like, it didn't work, obviously. And then outside of that, she was like, oh, I realized that actually my true love isn't for Hans. It's actually for Kristoff. And then there's that mad race. But there's actually, like, a tertiary step after that where true love wasn't expressed in the form of finding your Prince Charming. Instead, Anna's act of self-sacrifice was the act of true love. And so Frozen was really interesting in terms of like what the happily ever after what the true love is because true love wasn't the partnership between like like a relationship like a loving relationship that way but it was more of like a familial loving relationship which is why I think it's fascinating yeah I love this idea of complicating happily ever after is and what happily ever after is because like it's almost as if on a grew up in the same sort of um, society that we did because her Mm -hmm. idea of true love is affixed to a romantic relationship and she can't imagine that it would be anything else and neither can we. So props to Disney for shaking things up a little bit. Um, You had asked a question earlier, which I thought was really interesting about... um, if Frozen had come out before 2013, would it have been as popular as it was? Like, would the themes and the way that the story played out, would it have worked as well for a pre-2013 um, population? But honestly, I don't think that we can ask that question because I think if Frozen had come out before 2013, if it had come out in like the 90s or whatever, like back in the a sort of first wave of Disney animated films, I don't think they would have done it this way. I think they would have done it in a very like classic uh, girl meets boy, he's Prince Charming and he saves her, um, you know, she's the damsel in distress saved by the knight kind of thing. I think that that's how it would have played out. And that's only because this movie was made in the 21st century that they decided to subvert our expectations a little bit. And also it allowed Anna to say those things and for us to relate to her being like 
oh yeah, true love. I have to go find my Prince Charming and like meet the one and that's how I'm gonna get my happily ever after. But then if we hadn't witnessed all of those years of this is what Prince Charming is and this is what a princess uh, does and all of these different qualities of finding your happily ever after, then we wouldn't have been so surprised by the ending and we wouldn't have perhaps found, found it so exciting of a film, let's say. Right. Like, Disney is the one who created these expectations. Like, yeah. it's because of Disney that we have these ideas about happily ever after and true love, and it's Disney that's um, changing those ideas for us. And that's really cool because it's also, like really powerful like we're giving Disney a lot of influence in our lives by saying like these are what your expectations should be and that's how we have like we develop those expectations as a kid watching Little Mermaid watching Beauty and the Beast all of those different movies and then now growing up we realize oh wait like those expectations aren't true like those stereotypes aren't true because we're still watching the same kind of media and there's just so much power and influence from film. And I think that's also why film is so fascinating and so powerful. 